In this tutorial, I will provide an orientation to RStudio. I'll focus on the interface and the layout that you can see here on this video. So when you open up RStudio, it should look something like this. You might see some minor style and aesthetic differences between the Mac version versus the Windows version, but in general, it should look like this. Where when you first start up an RStudio session and open up the program, you should see three panels or windows. The first panel is going to be your console. The second is going to have your global environment. And the third panel down here is going to be where you'll see files, plots, packages, your help, as well as the viewer as well. So we'll cover these in a little bit more detail. Now I will say that this video is not meant to be an exhaustive overview of RStudio. I'm just gonna highlight some key features that are important to know when you're first getting started working with R in the RStudio environment. So again, this is what you'll see when you first log on. Now, when you do log on to RStudio, typically what you'll see is version information that you see right here in your console. And this tells you what version of R that RStudio is running on at the moment. So you can see here in my console, it says R version 4.0.2. And then you also see the name of the version. Usually it has some clever names. So here we see taking off again. And then some other information too that might be useful for you when you're just getting started. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can clear this information out of the console. In general, we don't save things that are in our console and I'll briefly go over our scripts, but I have another tutorial for that where I go over how to use an R script editor in order to write your script or your code. So again though, typically we don't want to save things into our console. So let's go ahead and clear this out. So to clear out your console, let's go to edit and then all the way down to clear console in the dropdown menus. So now you see it's blank. You don't need to do this, but I kind of like to start with a blank slate, so to speak, and it just has a cleaner look when you're first getting started. So what you'll also notice too is in your console window, it's going to note what your current working directory is if there is a working directory that's been set already. Because I'm working with an RStudio project here, and I have another video that explains RStudio projects, it means that by default, it's going to give me my working directory for that project, which you can see here. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to open up what's called an R script editor. So to do so, go to File, New File, R script. Again, that's File, New File, R script. And you'll see now we have four windows. And so the console is now split here. Where above it, we have the R script editor window. Now. This is where you would type in your code, any annotations or anything like that. So you can type it in directly here. So I'll start with an annotation. So I'll just make a note that this is an annotation or a note because it has a pound sign or a hashtag, however you'd like to call it, that comes before any text to the right of it. R is not going to run anything or it's not going to assume that this is a command or an operation that you'd like it to carry out. And so this is a way we can make notes and so forth um, that are separate and distinct from the code that we'd actually like R to run. And again, RStudio is just sitting on top of R and making it a little bit more user-friendly to work with. Okay, so watch what happens. For instance, if I want to run this line of code, I put my cursor there and click run. And you see, because it's an annotation, we don't get anything in our console here because there's really nothing to run here. This is just a note for ourselves. But if I do put in an actual function here or some type of command, type in git wd function here, which is git working directory to figure out what my current working directory is. And I don't put anything in the parentheses here and I click run. You'll see that it returns here in my console the current working directory, which we already saw here in the console window. If you're curious what a working directory is, I have a separate video tutorial on that as well. All right, so this is just a brief demonstration of what an R script editor can be used, used for. Again, I have a separate tutorial on how to create and save an R script, and I highly recommend that you write your code in an R script as opposed to doing it directly into the console. This will make it easier to save your work, it'll be cleaner, it'll be easier to follow along, and you can use those annotations to help yourself and others understand what you were doing with your code. All right, so the next thing I'd like to do is to show you this panel right here, which is your environment panel. It also has the history of what you were doing uh, prior to that, as well as if you need a tutorial or something like that. 
uh, specifically for our studio, those would appear there. Typically when you're first starting out though, you're just gonna focus on the environment tab here, which is, you'll see below it, your global environment. And this is where you're going to see any kind of object that you create. So if you read in data and assign them to an object, it'll appear here. If you do variable assignment and assign a variable to an object, it'll appear here as well. If you assign a table or a matrix to an object, it'll appear here. So th again, this is where all of your objects that are currently active in your global environment will appear. And also, this is where you can clean out the workspace too using this handy broom icon here. And this is where you can clean out all the objects if you'd like to do that. I actually did that right before I started this session so you wouldn't see some past objects in there. So you'd get a better feel for what it looks like when you first open our studio. Okay, moving down to the fourth window here, you see we have the plots window. And so the plots window is usually what pops up first, but not always. And so this is where if you generate any kind of data visualization or image or something like that using your R code, it'll appear here, a preview of it. And then you can use the export to save it as an image, a PDF, or copy it to a clipboard so you can then paste it somewhere else. This is also where you'll see your any packages that you have in your user library and which ones are active. Um, and so if you call up the packages, this is where you can get verification, um, which ones are actually going to be active and what versions of those packages you're working with. And this is where you can see some of the files that are currently in your working directory. Again, my working directory is my H drive, our workshop slash tutorials folder here. And so these are the other files that you can see here um, that are currently in that directory that are, um, are uh, that appear. But generally when you're first starting off, you're just gonna focus mostly on the plots window here if you generate any kind of image or plot using your code. All right, so that's generally what we have going on here with our studio. If you wanna type something directly into the command line, you're always welcome to do that. So for instance, if I just wanted to get my working directory, instead of writing it into an R script above, if I don't wanna save it, I can just type it directly into my command line here and hit enter or return. And I'll get the same thing as if I ran it up here, highlight it or put my cursor anywhere on the line and click run, it'll, it'll achieve the same outcome there. But again, if you wanna save your work, I recommend using an R script editor. All right, so that's essentially the basics of the visual layout when you first get into R. So when you look at these tabs, at the t or rather the drop-down menus at the top, you have some additional features here that you might find useful as well. So whenever you have an active window, like for instance, your script, and you'd like to save that as a file, you can do a save or a save as. You also see we have edit here, and this is where you'll find your typical um, edit features that you'd find in other programs like copy, paste, cut, and so forth and so on, as well as to undo or redo something that you've just done. Um, you can even get your word count as well, and I already showed you the clear console. Usually you're probably, when you're first starting off, you're not gonna focus too much on the code dropdown menu, so we'll skip along to the view. The view can be nice uh, for a couple different reasons. For instance, if you'd like to zoom out in terms of um, get a, a further away look at and smaller font and so forth at, for your interface, you can do that or you can zoom back in here. And if we move over to the plots feature here, uh, this drop down menu, this is where you can also save a plot that you have active as well in addition to doing it right there. And then also if you'd like to start a new session, you can always do that through the new drop down. If you wanna close R or start R, Again, our studio sits on top of R. You can do that during your session as well. And you can quit your session, and this means quitting your R Studio session here specifically. And you can also clear workspace. Um, you probably, when you're first starting off, you won't focus on this build dropdown too much or the debug um, or the profile. You might use the tools here to install packages perhaps, but you can also install packages using your command line or actually writing it directly into your R script editor. And I show how to do that in the gentle introduction to R video. And there's also some other options here. If you go to global options, if you wanna change, if you have multiple versions of R, for example, that are running beneath R Studio, and you wanna maybe use an older version for some reason, uh, maybe there's some function or some packet from some package that's no longer compatible with the latest version of R, uh, and you need to use a, an older version that you already have saved to your computer. You can click here to change that. Um, you can also change the appearance as well. 
of your R Studio. So currently I'm on the default modern theme here. You can affect your zoom, the editor theme, and so forth. You can change the pane layout. I just showed you these windows or window panes or panels here. This is the default layout for R Studio. I typically don't change the defaults on most programs I use, but there's also more information about R Markdown and so forth if you'd like to do that too. So that brings me to my next point, which is with R Markdown, if you do, I showed you how to go to File, New File, R Script. If you wanna use an R Notebook or R Markdown, those are also available just below R Script if you wanted to start writing with those as well. And there's also, this is really handy in the latest versions of R Studio. You also, if you're interested, this is a little bit more advanced in creating a shiny web app, um, you get a default here, a default script that you can start off with, which is really nice um, when you're just beginning. All right, well, this has been an orientation to the R Studio program. Again, it's gonna look almost identical, if not for a few minor, perhaps aesthetic differences between the Mac version and the Windows version. What you're looking at here is the Windows version. The most obvious differences that I'm aware of between the two versions is the hotkeys. So for instance, if you want to copy something, it's going to be control C on a Windows, which is fairly customary, and it will be a command C if you're using a Mac operating system. But other than that, most of the difference won't be substantive in nature, and you'll be able to, if you wanted, swap between different versions of RStudio between a Mac and a Windows operating system without much trouble. So this wraps up the orientation to RStudio.